Hello, I'm High Hill Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my miniature movie review of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. He considers the movie his ninth film. He considers Kills Bill Volumes 1 and 2 a singular project. So Once Upon a Time is the ninth movie written and directed by Quentin Tarantino. Now this is going to be a non-spoiler review, but I am going to offer some consumer information and I'm going to talk about the tropes of Quentin Tarantino, uh, comparing what is and is not in this new movie. So first of all, with uh, consumer information, there is a mid-credit scene, so be sure to stick around for the mid-credit scene. The movie takes place in 1969, so the film has a lot of smoking, just persistent smoking pretty much from the, when the movie starts to the, when the movie ends. So uh, if you have anything you get smoking, just be prepared to see a lot of smoking. <laughs> so uh, did I enjoy this movie? Well, again, it goes back to those tropes of Quentin Tarantino. Uh, he's known for having particular things in almost all of his movies. I have to say almost all of them because this movie has several of them that he usually has, but several others that aren't. For instance, uh, he loves using the same actors over and over again. So in this movie, we have Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio and various other actors and actresses uh, sprinkled throughout the movie doing various cameos. Quentin Tarantino loves using 60s and 70s music in his movies, so there's a lot of that going on. And because it takes place in 1969, he gets to really uh, live out his love of that era of filmmaking. So you see a lot of Hollywood recreated in that time frame with the cars and the buildings and the billboards and the signs and the props. And even when you go to a uh, certain uh, movie studios because the story's about uh, Hollywood actors. So you go to movie sets and just see like the filmmaking process. It's just marvelous. It's like a little time capsule uh, in movie form. So on those fronts, it's wonderful. But Quentin Tarantino is also known for some other tropes. So like he loves women's feet. So if you love women's feet, you're going to love this movie because there's lots of women's bare feet in this film. But on the other hand, he's also known for using a particular racial slur. If you've seen Django Unchained, then you definitely know where that racial slur is. And I was expecting to be using this movie. I don't like that racial slur. I don't really, you know, enjoy hearing it. But I'm so accustomed to it being in his movies that when it wasn't in this film, I was like, uh, what? <laughs> uh, Quentin Tarantino is known for a certain level of uh, visceral violence. And there is violence in this movie. But it's like, uh, if you're looking for something like Reservoir Dogs or Kill Bill or Glorious Bastards, uh, there's elements of it, but, uh, you know, don't go in the movie thinking that this is going to be the next uh, Hateful Eight. <laughs> uh, and another thing that uh, Quentin Tarantino is known for is telling not only unique stories, but in a unique format, or shall I say, unformat. And in here... Uh, not, there's really no story to this film. By story, I mean A leads to B, leads to C, leads to D, and finally resolution E. There's, I mean, you can pretty much take the story of this movie and type it up on one page, one side of the page. Uh, for the most part, we're just following uh, three particular characters, that being uh, Jack Dalton, who is a television star known for doing westerns in the transitional periods of his career, uh, another character is Cliff Booth, who is the stunt double for Jack Dalton. And pretty much wherever Jack goes, Cliff follows, hoping to find stunt work. And finally, Shannon Tate, who is this gorgeous Hollywood uh, actress, recently married to Roman Polanski. <laughs> so we uh, sort of follow like uh, days in the life of, but as far as story, there's not much there. And also, I have to say that I'm not a Hollywood historian, so I cannot speak to how much Quentin Tarantino uh, used in real historical fact versus making up stuff for his crazy movie, <laughs> okay? I'm not a historian, so I can't speak to any of that. But yeah, I did enjoy this overall, but it's my next to least favorite team in Tarantino movie. My least favorite is Death Proof, so this is like one step above Death Proof. I would enjoy seeing this movie again. I don't hate this film. It's wonderfully shot. It's wonderfully acted. It's wonderfully directed. It is a pleasant film, 
But, you know, after you see, like, these, like, Pope Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and various other things that he's known for, this is kind of a letdown. <laughs> a good movie, but not really a great Quentin Tarantino movie. But, hey, you know, maybe he's just trying to uh, do some new stuff and take his career in a new direction, similar to how one of the characters in this movie wants to take his career in a bit of a new direction. <laughs> All right, so I recommend the movie overall. But if you've seen the movie, I'd love to know what you thought of the film. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight. Thank you for watching, and remember, find inspiration everywhere.